So hello everyone, uh, welcome to the next seminar. Um, it's my greatest pleasure to introduce the speaker for today, uh, who is Katarina Viola. She will be talking about some combined basic linear programming and affine in teacher programming relaxations from for PVCSPs, I believe, <laughs> on infinite domains. Thank you, Jakub. So this is um, joint work with Sandra Shipney. And uh, um, I start with the definition of constraint satisfaction problem, even if probably one, every one of you knows what a constraint satisfaction problem is. So um, we start from um, a relational structure, which is a couple A, D sigma, where D is a finite set that we will call it, uh, and we will call it the domain, and sigma is a set of relations over D. Given a relational structure A, uh, d sigma, an instance I of the constraint satisfaction problem um, for A or CSP of A consists of a finite set of variables, uh, V, and uh, a formula Psi, which is given as the conjunction of finitely many relations from sigma applied to some of the variables from V. Uh, the output of an algorithm solving uh, the instance I of CSP um, uh, of A decides whether there exists an assignment um, alpha for the variable C from B with values in D that satisfies all the conjuncts, that is an assignment uh, which makes Psi to be true in relational structure A. So in this talk, um, I will talk uh, about three extensions of the notion of CSPs. Uh, which are uh, infinite domain constraint satisfaction problems or infinite CSPs, promise constraint satisfaction problems or PCSPs, and valued constraint satisfaction problems or uh, VCSPs. So, um, wait, I have a technical problem with, okay. So uh, in an uh, infinite domain constraint satisfaction problems, the, the domain of the relational structure is, uh, is allowed to be an infinite set. In, Promise constraint satisfaction problems, the task is to find an approximately good solution to an instance of a typically hard problem when a good solution is guaranteed to exist. And to model this uh, kind of approximation problem, we have that each constraint um, is formalized by two relations, a strict one and a relaxed one. Finally, uh, valued constraint satisfaction problems capture optimization problem. And here, to model preferences, the constraints are expressed by cost functions rather than relations. Uh, so now I will motivate these uh, extension of, uh, extensions of the notion of CSP with some examples, and uh, I will give you the formal definitions. So we start uh, uh, with an example of infinite domain CSP, uh, which is the acyclicity problem. Uh, we are given a directed graph, and the task is to find an ordering L of the vertices uh, such that L of U is smaller than L of V for each directed age U uh, to V. So um, as you can see, uh, for a particular graph, uh, that is for a particular instance of the acyclicity problem, um, the size of the domain is bounded by the size uh, of the set of the vertices of the graph. However, we want to have an algorithm which works uh, for every instance uh, of the acyclicity problem. And this is why uh, we can formalize this problem as a CSP only by allowing uh, the domain to be an infinite set. So uh, um, infinite domain constraint satisfaction problems are defined exactly uh, as classical constraint satisfaction problems. And the only uh, difference is that the relational structure is allowed to have um, a, a domain which is a possibly infinite set, so a, a domain with arbitrary cardinality. Okay, and uh, um, we have that the class of infinite CSPs uh, um, strictly contains the class of uh, classical CSPs. So next example is free five coloring, in which we are given a graph which is known to be free colorable, and the task is to find uh, a five coloring. This is an example of a PCSP or promise constraint satisfaction problem. So in promise constraint satisfaction problems, um, 
um, we start from a promise template rather than from a relational structure. A promise template is a couple AB of relational structures over the same set of relations sigma with domains A and B respectively, and such that uh, the relational structure A is homomorphic to the relational structure B. An instance I of the promise constraint satisfaction problem for the promise template AB or PCSP AB consists of a finite set of variables and a formula psi uh, given again as a conjunction of finitely many relations from uh, sigma applied to some of the variables from B. And so far, the definition is the same uh, as the definition of, of the input of a classical constraint satisfaction problem. Um, the difference is in the output of an, of an algorithm solving it. In fact, um, the output of an algorithm solving uh, PCSP AB is yes, if there exists an assignment uh, for the variables uh, from B with values in the domain A, uh, such that psi is true in the relational structure A, and the output is no, if for all assignments beta uh, for the variables uh, uh, with values in the domain B, we have that psi is false in the relational structure B. Um, so uh, we can uh, encode uh, classical CSPs as PCSP by um, taking the, the promise tem template uh, with the same uh, relational structure. So CSP of A is the same as PCSP AA. Okay, our uh, last example uh, is a uh, uh, mean vertex cover in which we are given a graph and the task is to find a minimum size set of vertices W such that each edge has at least one endpoint in W. This is an example of BCSP and as I told you, uh, BCSP is capture optimization problems and therefore uh, we need to express preferences so relations are not enough, we need cost functions. Um, and therefore, um, we don't start from a relational structure, but from a valid structure. Um, a valid structure is a couple gamma d tau, where d is a finite set called the domain, and tau is a set of cost functions over d. Uh, that are uh, functions uh, phi uh, from d to the n with values in q union uh, the set containing the symbol plus infinity for some rtn. Um, yeah, I mentioned the fact that having um, phi of uh, x equal plus infinity for a, a tuple x means that um, the, the cost function is not defined on x, that is, uh, the tuple is not in the relation uh, domain. Given a valid structure gamma d tau, an instance i of the valid constraint satisfaction problem for gamma or VCSP gamma consists of a finite set of variables v an objective function capital phi, which is given this time as the sum of finitely many cost functions um, from tau applied to some of the variables from b. And finally, we are given a threshold uh, that is a rational number. Uh, the output of an algorithm solving uh, VCSP of gamma decide, uh, is um, uh, an algorithm solving uh, VCSP of gamma decides whether there exists an assignment alpha for the variables uh, from B with values in D in the domain D, uh, such that the cost of the objective function, which is defined as the value of capital phi uh, of alpha in gamma, is at most the threshold view. Uh, so, yeah, all CSPs can also be encoded as BCSPs uh, by replacing relations with cost functions with values in zero and plus infinity. Um, so if we have relation, we can encode it as a cost function um, by assigning uh, um, f of t equals zero when the tuple t uh, is in the relation and to plus infinity otherwise. Okay, so uh, VCSPs, infinite CSPs, and PCSPs are three different extensions of the notion of CSP. Um, and, and, and as I showed you, in every one of these extensions, we modify a part of the, the definition. Therefore, we can combine uh, these uh, three extensions. And this is what we did in our work with Standa. So we consider the class of infinite domain promise uh, valued constraints and structure problems or infinite PVCSPs for short. So uh, 
in uh, infinite domain promise value constraint satisfaction problems, we start from a promise value template over arbitrary domains. That is a couple delta gamma of valued structures over the same set of cost functions tau and with arbitrary domains um, D uh, and C respectively, and such that delta is fractionally homomorphic to gamma. I will tell you what uh, fractionally homomorphic means in a moment. Um, an instance i of the promise value to constraint satisfaction problem for a, a promise value template delta gamma, PVCSP delta gamma, consists of uh, a finite set of variables v, an objective function capital phi, given as in the VCSP setting as a, a sum of finitely many cost functions from um, tau applied to some of the variables from v, and the threshold. And uh, as in the promise um, case, the output of an algorithm solving this problem is yes, if there exists an assignment uh, for the variables with values in the domain D, uh, such that capital Phi um, has cost at most U uh, in the value structure delta, and no, uh, if for all assignments uh, uh, for the variables with values uh, in uh, C, we have that um, capital Phi uh, is not bounded by U in the uh, value structure gamma. Okay, so now I can tell you what is a, a fractional homomorphism. Assume that we have uh, uh, two valid structures, uh, gamma and delta, with domain C and U respectively, and we um, over the same set of cost functions tau. So uh, a fractional um, homomorphism from uh, delta to gamma is a probability measure on the set of maps from D to C with non-empty support and such that for every cost function phi from tau and every tuple from D to the RT of phi, we have that, that the expectation for uh, phi of H applied to A uh, in gamma where H uh, um, is distributed accordingly uh, to chi um, uh, is at most the value of phi of A in delta. If there exists a fractional homomorphism from delta to gamma, we say that delta is fractionally homomorphic to gamma. So in a promise value template delta gamma, the assumption delta is fractionally homomorphic to gamma guarantees that if there exists an assignment which makes um, phi um, at most u in delta, then there exists an assignment uh, in gamma which makes phi uh, at most u in the, the value structure gamma. So the notion of um, fractional homomorphism can be generalized to the notion of fractional polymorphism as in the, uh, for homomorphism and polymorphisms. And uh, so given two value structure uh, gamma and delta with domain C and D and um, with same set of cost function tau, a K refractional polymorphism omega uh, from delta to gamma is a probability measure um, on the set of maps from D to DK with values in C with non-empty support uh, and such that for every cost function uh, from tau and every choice of K many tuples uh, uh, from D to the area of phi, A1 up to AK, we have that the expectation for phi of G applied to um, A1 uh, to AK in gamma where G is distributed accordingly to omega is at most the arithmetic average of phi um, A1, uh, phi AK in delta. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we can also define fractional polymorphism for uh, value structures uh, rather than for promise value template. And the fractional polymorphism of a valid structure gamma is um, defined as the fractional polymorphism of the, the promise value template gamma gamma. Okay, let, let's go back to our uh, PVCSPs. So uh, we consider so our setting is the following. We have a promise value template uh, delta gamma, uh, and we assume that uh, the, the domain D of delta is a finite set, while the domain C of gamma is an infinite one. Consider uh, I uh, an instance of PVCSP delta gamma uh, with objective function this capital phi given uh, uh, this finite sum of uh, phi j applied to the tuple of variables xj, um, and now consider the following uh, integer program uh, with variables uh, zjt and wxia. 
So this is uh, uh, an integer program. And uh, um, so as you can see here, uh, the variables zjt and wxia are required to take values in the set containing 0 and 1. Having wxia equal 1 corresponds to the fact that the, the, um, the variable xi is assigned to the uh, value a from the domain d. And similarly, having Z, uh, zjt equal 1 corresponds to the fact that the, uh, the tuple of variables xj is assigned to the um, uh, tuple of uh, values from, from the, uh, t. Um, then we have that the, the second row of this program says that every variable has to be assigned exactly to one element from the domain. The first row expresses the, the, the marginality relation uh, that has to hold between the Z and the Ws. And finally, we require that uh, Zj of t is zero uh, whenever t is not in the domain of phi j, meaning that uh, phi j of t is equal plus infinity. Okay, so uh, it is easy to observe that if we have that the, the um, optimal value of this integer program is at most u, then uh, we have that, that um, capital phi is at most u in delta. And the answer to the instance i of PVCSP delta gamma is yes. Uh, we ask whether having uh, i p i delta uh, not bounded by u imply that uh, phi is not bounded by u in gamma. But before answer, answering this question, we have another problem. The problem is that uh, solving uh, an integer program is NPR in general. And therefore, uh, we uh, consider two um, relaxations of the, the, the program that I showed you in the uh, previous slide, which are known to be solved only in polynomial time. The two relaxations considered are the basic linear programming or BLP relaxation and the fine integer programming or, B, uh, or AIP relaxation. Uh, so they are defined exactly in the same way as the, the, the um, the previous integer program that I showed you before, but uh, in the BLP relaxation, we require that the variables that we call, uh, we call them uh, lambda and mu, uh, they are required to take values in the set of non-negative uh, rationals. And in the finite relaxation, we require that the variables Q and R um, take, uh, take value in the set of integer, integers. So, um, um, our algorithm is a combination of the BLP and the AI relaxation. So uh, we combine these two relaxations using a, a um, refinement step. So the refinement is defined um, in this way. So we first solve the BLP relaxation and we pick a feasible solution, lambda star, mu star, uh, to, to this problem. Uh, and now the refinement of the AI relaxation with respect to this special solution to the BLP is um, the uh, AI relaxation to which we had two, um, two more um, uh, the rows, more rows. And um, we require that QJT is zero whenever lambda star JT is zero and that the, the um, correspondent uh, R, R, R XIA is zero whenever uh, Mustar XIA is zero. Okay, so uh, our algorithm works in, uh, in this way. We start from an instance I, V uh, capital Phi U of PVCSP delta gamma. And uh, uh, we first ask if the optimal value to the BLP i delta uh, is bounded by uh, u. If the answer is no, then the output of our algorithm is no. Otherwise, we first find a special feasible solution, lambda star mu star, to, the, um, to BLP i delta. And then uh, we compute the refinement of the AIP um, uh, I delta uh, with respect to the special solution. We ask uh, if the, the, the refined AIP uh, I delta 
is uh, bound exact most u. And if the answer is, is no, then the, the answer of the algorithm is no. Otherwise, the answer of uh, the algorithm is yes. How do we find this special feasible solution to the BLT? So um, we know that uh, if the, the optimal value of the BLT uh, I delta is at most u, then we can find a solution lambda star mu star having the objective value at most u and such that it is either a relative interior point in the feasibility polytop of BLT I delta, or it is a, a relative interior point in the optimal uh, polytop of, of uh, the BLP relaxation I delta. Okay, uh, so we uh, want to know when this algorithm uh, correctly solve a PVCSP. So we answered this question uh, um, in terms of algebraic properties of the, the promise value template. And in particular, we have the following theorem. So let delta and gamma be a promise value template such that delta has finite domain. Um, well, and, and gamma can have a possibly infinite domain. We assume that for all natural number L, there exists a block symmetric fractional polymorphism of delta gamma with RT 12 plus one having two symmetric blocks of size L plus one and L respectively. Then the BLP plus AIP algorithm correctly solves the PVCSP delta gamma in polynomial time. So this theorem is an extension of a result by Brakensic, Gurusvami, Rochne, and Njibni from uh, 2020 for PCSP that was presented some weeks ago uh, by Joshua. Um, and what we did is to lift the analysis both to the valued and the infinite domain case. However, uh, even if the algorithm is uh, so, uh, I mean, from the feasibility point of view, it's, it's the same. Um, the analysis of the algorithm required um, more attention. In particular, the refinement step in the value case needed some additional care. Um, and also, in the analysis of the algorithm, we used uh, um, the notion of a, a bi multi set structure for which we took inspiration from two papers one from Kolmogorov, Tapper, Gibney from uh, 2000. 15 for BCSPs and the other uh, by uh, Manuel Bodiski, McPherson, and Tucker from um, 2013 for infinite domain CSPs. Uh, okay, now I tell you what is uh, a block symmetric fractional polymorphism. So we know that uh, an emory map is symmetric if it is uh, invariant under uh, permuting uh, its arguments. An emory map G is said to be block symmetric if there exists a partition of the coordinates of the map G into blocks such that uh, uh, G is permutation invariant within each coordinate block. Uh, examples of symmetric operations are uh, max and the arithmetic average, while examples of block, block symmetric operations are uh, the alternating sum and uh, some kind of moving averages, uh, like the, the one that you see in the second row. Um, yeah, and the fractional polymorphism is said to be block symmetric uh, if its support only contains block symmetric operations. In the same way, a fractional polymorphism is said to be symmetric if uh, uh, its support only contains symmetric operations. Uh, I mentioned the fact that um, if the promise value template, uh, template has uh, uh, symmetric fractional polymorphisms of all arities, uh, then uh, the um, PVCSP is correctly solved in polynomial time by uh, an application of the BLP relaxation alone. Uh, now I, I show you an, uh, an application of this result for promised VCSPs to, for, uh, for uh, infinite VCSPs without the, the promise assumption. Uh, before, I have to give you the notion of sampling algorithm. So given a valid structure gamma uh, with a finite set of cost function and domain C, um, a, sampling, a sampling algorithm for gamma takes as input a positive integer D and uh, it outputs a finite domain valued structure uh, delta D uh, with domain D and, and having the same set of cost functions that is 
fractional homomorphic to gamma, and such that for every sum of cost functions from sigma um, with at most d variables, and for every threshold u, we have that there exists an assignment uh, for the variables uh, with values in the domain C, um, such that the cost in the value structure gamma is at most u, if and only if there exists an assignment uh, for the variables with values in the domain D, such that the, the, um, the um, cost function phi, um, uh, the, such that phi has cost at most u in the value structure delta D. Uh, we also say that a sampling algorithm is efficient if it runs in polynomial time. So it is an easy observation that for every uh, d, uh, natural number, the couple delta d gamma is in particular a, a promise value template. So uh, because of this, we can state this corollary. Uh, so uh, consider a gamma to be an infinite domain value structure uh, with finitely many post functions that admits an efficient sampling algorithm. Assume that gamma has a block symmetric fractional polymorphism of variety 2 L plus 1 with two symmetric blocks of size L plus 1 and L respectively for all um, natural numbers L. Then VCSP of gamma is solvable in polynomial time. And the idea of the proof is that for every uh, uh, natural number D and for every D sample delta D of gamma, uh, we can build a block symmetric fractional polymorphism of variety 2L plus 1 with two symmetric blocks of, of, size, plus, um, of size L plus 1 and L respectively for all uh, L. And we can build this uh, block symmetric fractional polymorphism starting from um, the fractional homomorphism between the, the, the two structures and, the, 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 um, yeah, and in using the, the, the theorem, uh, the main theorem that I showed you in the previous slide. Um, we know that there are um, concrete examples of value structures emitting an efficient sampling algorithm uh, that are PLH value structure, um, that are value structures uh, whose cost functions are first order definable over Q using uh, the order, um, the one, and the scalar multiplication by uh, rational elements. And so, and um, using uh, the, the, this corollary, uh, I mean, this corollary, this corollary gives a new tractability result for a class of PLH value structures having a special form of convexity. Uh, but so, this corollary can be uh, somehow extended back to the, the promise um, case, to the promise setting uh, in this way. We, have um, two, uh, a promise value template with finitely many cost functions. And this time, uh, both uh, value structure in the promise value template uh, can have uh, infinite domains. Uh, assume that gamma one admits an efficient sampling algorithm and that the promise value template gamma one, gamma two has a symmetric uh, fractional, has a block symmetric fractional polymorphism of variety 2L plus one with two symmetric blocks of sizes L plus one and L uh, respectively for all uh, natural numbers L. Then we have the uh, PVCSP of uh, gamma one and gamma two uh, is solvable uh, in polynomial time. Yes, I mean, this is uh, uh, this theorem uh, is, is I, I find it nice because um, we, we can assume that both the, 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 the value structure can have uh, infinite domain. Okay, so this was um, everything I wanted to tell you about our uh, work. Um, there are now some open questions that I would like to answer so, um, and to discuss with you. Uh, my first question is, the first thing that I want to know is how to combine higher levels of the Shirali Adams hierarchy for um, LP and AIP and uh, uh, find uh, their applicability to, I mean, the applicability of this combination to uh, PVCSPs. Uh, but uh, nothing is known so far, I mean, uh, the best of, uh, for the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, even for uh, classical PCSPs. Uh, yeah, but I, I think this is this is something um, that that um, need, yeah. I mean, it it capture my attention this problem. And another thing is that um, to investigate the applicability conditions for uh, the AIP relaxation alone. Um, so 
the, the, um, the applicability conditions for the BLP and uh, the combination of the BLP and the AIP um, extended the, the, the um, sufficient condition for application of the, the, these relaxations in the uh, classical uh, PCSP, finite domain PCSP setting. So um, I expected to have the same also for the AIP relaxation, meaning that the, the a sufficient condition for the applicability was the uh, existence of um, um, alternating fractional polymorphism. Um, however, it seems that uh, the, the, the approach that uh, we used for the uh, BLP and for the combination of the BLP and the AIP uh, is not enough for the AIP relaxation alone. But I also have to admit that we didn't spend so much time on it. Um, I, I think it, it, is, uh, it is interesting to know, even if I mean, a result will be subsumed by the combination of the two. Uh, uh, next question would be what other results known for CSPs, VCSPs, PCSPs, and infinite CSPs can be extended to the combined, uh, the combined setting? And finally, um, uh, I would like to, to know about new applications of uh, infinite domain PVCSPs. Uh, okay, so this was everything. I thank you for your attention. I don't know whether I was too fast as usual. But now I can answer questions. Thank you very much. Um, we actually have quite some time left, so we can go back into some details if uh, okay. people think it was too fast. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, Are there uh, some questions right now. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, can you please go back to the statement of the main theorem? Yes. Was here. I'm sorry, my computer becomes crazy with the, the, the warm weather. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I go. Okay. So maybe, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so in the statement, uh, for every odd arity, you have uh, two blocks of size L and L plus one. Mm -hmm. I know that in this uh, original PCSP result, <clears throat> you, uh, you, you, can, uh, you may have uh, uh, just block symmetric polymorphism where the size of the minimal block grows to infinity. And then it somehow follows that you have such uh, block symmetric with two blocks for every odd arity. So I assume the same is true in here, or is there any issue? Okay, so uh, you can prove the sufficient condition uh, also if you have um, like other kind of blocks, like if you have um, another number of, of blocks and of different arities. This, I mean, the, the proof can be generalized. The, 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 um, yeah, this one also can be generalized to this yes. PCSP. Um, mm, I mean, we didn't prove that if you have uh, um, if you have any block symmetric fractional polymorphism, then you have one with these two symmetric blocks. So, I mean, um, it holds on the feasibility side, but uh, we didn't. Uh, I mean, we didn't investigate the, the, this question. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. What I can tell you is that here the, 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 you have a, um, a little trouble because uh, you want that every uh, operation in the support has um, the same uh, um, the same blocks. Hmm. See, so th this might be a problem, but uh, uh, okay. But the tractability result uh, for that it's enough to have weaker assumptions. But it's not clear that the condition uh, implies this condition, which is written here. Yes. OK. And uh, one more question. So you have these relaxations, for example, the linear. Uh, but the domain now is infinite. Uh, so isn't that somehow an issue? No, because uh, the, the, um, as you 
can see you only apply the relaxation to one uh, of the, 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 um, the value structure. That is the reason why I started with having uh, the first uh, value structure in the template with finite domain. Um, and actually, this is an idea of the paper that I, uh, that I, cite, um, I cited from Manuel, uh, Johan Tapper and McPherson that you, uh, you use uh, essentially the fractional homomorphism and uh, I mean, you, do, you don't care about the, 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 um, uh, applying the algorithm to the, 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 um, the infinite domain structure, you only care about the, the finite domain one um, and then you, you use uh, oh. The fractional homomorphism. Uh, okay, that is the sampling step, right? So you yeah. actually first do a sam sampling step before in, uh, starting this thing, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in the classical setting, in the, here, in the, in the, if you assume that the first structure has a finite domain, then you, you don't care about the other. I mean, this actually holds also in the, in the PCP case, and uh, it is like a, a straightforward consequence uh, of the, the um, the result for for uh, I mean the, the combination of the, the the BLP and the AI relaxation for classical PCS PCS I mean at least on the sufficient for the, the sufficient condition can be extended to to to, to promise template in which the second uh, relational structure has infinite domain. Okay, thanks. Some other questions? I have one question. So, so linear programming is in P and affine integer programming is in, in P. And are there other infinite domain uh, structures that would be relevant for, for finding other, other algorithms than BLP and AIP in, in the setting of? So this is the, 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 the same question that I asked to, to, to Joshua like two weeks ago when, uh, when he gave his talk to the, I mean, uh, in principle, there are other relaxation that can be used instead of the, the, the AIP. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, more can be founded in, in this paper by uh, Joshua and Gurusvami uh, from 19, I think 2019, uh, but I don't know, how to use them. So here, what, what I can tell you is that the, there is a problem with the uh, affine programming uh, because in the affine programming, the, the solution that you get are, um, are not fractional. They are integer, uh, they are integers. So uh, they can also be uh, negative integers. So, uh, and you, you can, I mean, my intuition is that uh, we could uh, use it in, like, like in, in, the, in the way we did because we started from a fractional, uh, from a fractional solution, which is the, the solution given uh, by the BLP. Because in the end, we want to, to have something which is fractional in the, in, the, in the valued world. I mean, this is, maybe it's also in the priest case, but in the valued case, this is really needed. Uh, so I think that, uh, you can combine some other kind of relaxations, but you um, need something that produces in the end some uh, like a solution with a fractional solution. In, in this case, uh, this was um, achieved by, by the, this refinement step. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I still don't know uh, what other um, uh, relaxation are, are, are good candidates, but this is an interesting question. And yeah, I mean, a, a, trivial, a trivial answer to your question would be, yes, try to consider higher level to the Shirley Adams. So you consider the two free level for the BLP and the two free level for the AIP and try to combine them. But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know so far. Maybe just a, uh, like one more comment. If I'm not mistaken, you can actually run a single relaxation for both of these uh, at once, right? This, if, if you adjoin Z with square root of two or something like that, then it would actually uh, achieve the same thing as these two combined, am I right? Uh, is there anyone understanding this? Uh, can, can, you, can you tell me again, please? So if you replace, uh, Q and Z, 
with a single uh, domain uh, uh, like z uh, uh, yeah, join a square root of two, then this is still solvable and somehow achieves both at the same time. But this is something I just vaguely remember from the paper. I, I had a, the impression that it's actually the other way around that uh, that this uh, that with uh, with square root of two is solved by exactly this, uh, or at least that's. I thought that they they somehow claim in the paper it is equivalent. It is equivalent. But, yeah, but but okay. It's, uh, I, I was hoping that somebody can confirm this, but yeah. <laughs> I definitely remember that Josh told that uh, they first discovered the other relaxation that, yeah. that you are talking about before uh, discovering this one. Yeah. Which doesn't say much, but yeah. Uh, what, what, what I can tell you is that in the valued case, we have more more problems because we want also to optimize in the, uh, so my, my intuition is that you have to run one after the other, but. Hmm. But yeah, I don't know. That. I have one more question. So, from what you said uh, in this last answer, it somehow feels that uh, the affine integer programming relaxation like does not translate well for 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 VCSPs. Is is that true? Like, I mean, is that the main obstacle for characterizing it that you? can't really produce efficiently a solution from. Yeah, so that um, on its own, I mean, as I told you, we didn't spend so much time on it, uh, but but because uh, the, the solution that you get is something which is integer and can be negative on uh, some coordinates. So, I mean, I don't know how to uh, translate it like in uh, terms of fractional polymorphism and mm -hmm. so this is so that that is one of the obstacles then yeah, yeah. so thanks there's some more questions i have a very general question um do you have any examples of an actual computational problem that can be modeled in this like infinite domain PVCSP and not in the more specific domains, or is that part of your open problem? Uh, what you what you what you mean? Uh, I mean that, uh, an example of a problem which is only uh, um, uh, so that you can formalize only in the extended uh, setting and not yeah. okay. Um, no, well, the the the, the um, couple uh, in, uh, infinite domain structure having sampling uh, is an example of a promising uh, BCSP over infinite domain because uh, what you get uh, from the the, um, the the sampling algorithm uh, gives you a promise value template which uh, is over arbitrary domains. But uh, besides of these, I don't have others. Okay. And actually, uh, when I started to look at the BLP and the AIP relaxation, I wanted to solve classical infinite domain VCSPs. And uh, uh, so this was actually my motivation to start looking at this. And uh, um, I um, only um, observed later that the, the, promise, um, the promise setting would help me in, uh, in looking at infinite domain VCSPs. Yes. If I may, uh, I actually know of one problem that is that is at least in the finite part. So that's that's PVCSP that is quite natural, and that is uh, that is the promise is that you are given a graph that is say three colorable, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. want to decide whether there is a big independent set. So independent set of density like one fourth. Yes. This can be quite naturally okay. formulated as. PVCSP, but it still has a finite domain. So yeah. I assume something like that could also work with infinite domains, but I don't have anything at hand. I'm sorry. Some more questions?
Okay. Um, I guess if that's all, let's thank Katarina again. Sure.